Hi, and welcome to Spry Whimsy Fiber Arts. Today, I am going to show you how to put together the new Abe wheel. Now, this video may seem a little off in continuity because I had to shoot it over two days, so my outfit's gonna change. So, what I'm gonna show you is how this new Abe wheel from Spinolution comes in a four ounce, or a 16 or comes in a 12 ounce, or a four ounce fire option. It is an unfinished wheel and it is a little more of a flat pack assembly than most wheels from Spinolution. It also has a new tensioning system back here. But we'll get to that. We're going to take you through the whole process of how to assemble that wheel from the opening the box all the way through it. Now, like I said, it may not be fully con continuous in continuity in my outfits, but the process will be complete. Today, I have just received one of the newest wheels from Spinolution under the Spin Perfect line. This one is called the Abe, and you need to assemble it yourself. So, I'm gonna go through the instructions I have on this and try to show you how to put this together. We're gonna unbox it see what it's all about together. I have not seen what this wheel looks like other than a slight glance video uh, or photo at this point. So I'm anxious to see what's in here. It's a much smaller box than any of the other wheels. It's more of a flat pack, so we'll find out what it's like together. Four ounce flyer, tension, and something about bands. Parts, tools, which includes a penny. Find out what that is. There's a big chunk of the wheel right there. Is that big chunk is assembled? A couple more pieces here. And that there's an empty box. Good envelopes, I can't get into them. Okay, that looks like I got a bobbin, whirl, flyer arms, Orifice bar, a lost screw here that probably goes with the flyer arm. That's part of the bobbin. Okay, so we've got ourselves a 12 ounce bobbin. Spin perfect bobbin. That much I know how to assemble. Let's see what else we got. Just one last bag. All right, I see another four ounce spin perfect bobbin. Additional set of flyer arms. So I have a feeling we get our choice of bobbin size here. So let's put these parts on the side that they came with. There. 
there's our difference. There's our flyer head for the 12 ounce. Here's the flyer head for the 4 ounce. Dry band, another set of flyer arms, 4 ounce, 12 ounce. And then a bag of parts. All right, so this is a fan tensioner. We'll see how that goes as we go along here. That would be my accelerator, I believe. Tension block. All right, miscellaneous parts that goes with the tension block. That would be a Kate peg, a couple more Kate pegs, a couple of bolts. Another part of the tensioning system. And a bunch of little parts uh, to keep separate. There are some teeny tiny screws in here as well. So play your IKEA game. Count out what little parts you have. Set each set aside. If you can, get a little container to put them in. Keep track of everything so you don't lose anything. Oops. And make sure you double check all the way to the bottom of the bag. Make sure you get all your parts out. All right, included is that set of Allen wrenches and the penny as your tools. Uh, again, double check the bottom of all your bags. If you look at my flyer arms here, I did notice I was missing one of the screws. They're just sitting on the magnet right now. There was still one in the bag. So this is my 12 ounce flyer pile of parts there. And I have my four ounce fl flyer over here. Um, and then up here, accelerator, the fan tensioner. We'll find out more about that later. Lazy Kate pegs. I don't know yet. We'll find out what those are. Specific bolts that are listed in the instructions. And down here are sets of screws. Hopefully I have the right amount and another washer. Okay, we'll go through this step by step and put this wheel together. Place the foot pads on the treadle and screw with eight of the number two screws. That's these little black screws here, and these are the foot pads. So you do need a screwdriver to assemble this as well as the tools provided. We have two different sizes of foot pads. There's a little room here and a lot of room here. So I am assuming these, that one goes there. And this one goes here. Now there are little holes pre-drilled to help us out, get us lined up. Keep trying to get that lined up there. So I line up my little screws here. Little black ones, there's eight of them. Before I get too far, I want to look at the back. Make sure they are lining up and I see the little holes there, the little holes there. Okay, so I'm going to continue through all of those.
All right, the next step in the instructions are screw the footrest to the L bracket. So I see six screws holes there and the two pegs that line up here and here for the wooden pegs. So we're screwing up through here. All right, the next step says drop the wheel base into the L bracket. So there's the base. Now to put the back legs on. So I'm going to turn this around. All right, bolt and washer through each of these <coughs> and in. Uh, looks like I'm going, going to have to find a wrench for that because that again is not one of the included tools. All right, looks like I need a 7 16th socket to do this. I'm just going to finger tight this for now. Maybe come back later and really wrench it down. All right, starting to come together. We have a wheel that will spin. Now we need a flyer. Okay. I think I got this now. I'm going to take the bolt and the fan a little here that goes on there. Um, then I'm going to screw this on here all the way down. All right. And this needs to spin freely. All right, I can tighten a little bit more, still spins freely. Okay, set that down. I'm gonna grab the Kate here. Kate, because it's got a couple holes to put some pegs in. Put that in the hole. That lines up like this. This fits up against the castle here. Line it up with a hole. Slide that through. Easier if I do it that way. Slide that all the way through. Let's turn this to the front. Now, I'll place a bowl to place a washer and a nut on the front here. The basic nut, not the locking nut. Tighten that up. That still spins freely in the back. Then I'm going to take the accelerator and that goes up front here and then I can tighten this little guy to hold that on. Let me see if I can figure out what size. All right, I got a three eighths inch socket to get that tightened up. Don't want it super tight, a little movement's okay, but we do want it to be able to turn. I didn't wrench it down, I just finger tightened that. Okay, let's talk about flyer assembly. So right now I have here the parts for the four ounce flyer. I have the orifice bar, the two flyer arms, two small screws, and the actual flyer that will go on the wheel. So on the back of this, 
where it says spin, spin perfect, four ounce flyer. There's the two holes on either side and there's a notch on those. So we want to line these up, not the, not the end with a magnet, but the blank end, where the notch is lining up with the notch in here. And you want the rounded smooth side on the outside of the flyer. And you take that and you insert the screw here, screw that down. I'm not going to go all the way quite yet. And I'll do the same with the other side. I have the flat side and the flat part, so that's keyed in. I'll put the screw in in the back on this one. Get it most of the way in. I'm going to throw on my orifice bar again. I have the flat side and the round side and it's always the hook down from the pegs. Now that that's on there, I'm going to finish tightening this up just to make sure it's going to line up the way we need it to in the front. May not be necessary to put that on there, but I think it helps. And then this you want to make sure it's pretty snug so your flyer arms don't wiggle too much. And then we'll put that on the wheel. Okay, now we're going to put on the flyer shaft. So, first thing we need to do is take the smallest of the little Allen screws, loosen the hex nut, remove this, set it aside, that's got a magnet on it. There's two little O-rings, slide those off, keep track of those. Alright. Then, place the shaft into the back of the head. there. The dry band comes just sitting on the wheel. I've got this tucked back here so it's ready to go. Now you've got some tiny little washers. Put one washer on the back here. Then insert your flyer. All the way back and in theory that should just get into that a little bit. I need to take that off though because now I need to put my whoop, the next little washer goes on the shaft. Then you're putting your uh, hex nut with the magnet on it onto the shaft and that gets tightened down with the little Allen wrench. And then you should be ready to add the bobbin, snaps on, and then the orifice bar going the correct way, always with the um, hook going away from the pegs. The dry band was on the wheel when I got it. Just sort of sitting there waiting for me. All right, so that's on there. Now, what we don't have here is the um, tensioning set. So that goes in there, that goes on there. piece goes on there. Now part of this wheel is this new tensioner here that relies on this little fan back here as part of your tensioning system. So as you're spinning, this is spinning with it 
This is, you know, if your flyer is spinning with it. And then this ha will have little tension either based on this or the little fan on the back of that. That's my understanding. I'm going to have to hand this to my spinner and see what happens. Now, we also have the Kate over here. So we have our three holes for the lead, for the Kate on the side. And then those get stored somewhere. Oh, so these get stored down here. There's another one on the other side. If you had purchased both the 4 and the 12 ounce, this is how you change your flyers. It's just this simple. We take that off. We have our orifice bar set aside. Loosen this up. A little set screw. Slide that off. I just did that little jump so I can get my first little O-ring, set that aside, take off my head, then taking my 12 ounce pancake flyer here, slide that on, put the little black washer on there, slide on the hex collar here, tighten that down. Now this one's a little harder to get into because you've got much more, I can't use it this way, I have to use it this way. That gets tightened down and that's on there. Throw on my 12 ounce bobbin and my 12 ounce orifice bar just like that then what I didn't show was put this on and then stretch the dry band underneath This wheel also comes with an accelerator on it, and up until now I hadn't shown you in use with the accelerator. So I'm going to put my little extra accelerator band on the accelerator ahead of time. Just let that sit there. I'm going to put my 4 ounce head back on. I got my little washer there. Slide that on. The next little washer slides on. Put the hex collar back on and I'm doing this this way because it's much easier when the dry band is already on your accelerator to get started. Ah, even more so than I just said. Let's take this back again. And this is why we do these things and show it on video so you know why you do this. Backing up, take that off, take that off, and I put that here to start because you're never going to get that up and over that. Now I'm going to just drop that onto one of the whirls as I put this all back together. Again, little washer, slide it on. Hex collar, slide it on, tighten down. Okay, I can do that. I was just thinking there for a second if I'm going to be able to get that onto the accelerator, and I am able to get that on the accelerator. Okay, tighten that up. Now adjust this onto a slightly higher setting. Put my accelerator 
my regular band on to the accelerator. Now, I don't know what the ratios are yet. I haven't seen a chart. Put that onto the big one there. Now, if you want to spin some really short fiber lengths, say cotton or bunny, you now have an accelerated wheel. It's going to give you some really high ratios. Now, just know that when you do that, you put get that line back up there. When you put them on these really high ratios, it's a lot more work to treadle down below. You've got a lot more forces you're trying to overcome, but you're going to be able to get very high speeds out of this wheel. I'm at the highest right now, and it is pretty tough to treadle this right now. You can loosen that up, slow it down a bit. Oops, they want to fight each other. Oh yeah, that's much easier as I slowed it down from the highest ratio, I brought this one down and this one down a few and this one up. So it's not at the highest ratio, but it is at a fairly high one. But it's a little more neutral at that point. And it's a lot easier to treadle. Once you go to the highest ratio, it is very difficult to treadle. All right, so that is the new Abe wheel from Spin Perfect, which is a subdivision of Spin Illusion. You can already buy objects from Spin Perfect, like the extra bobbins, and they have little foot covers for your polywog like this that make it uh, a little more useful. So it's kind of a really versatile wheel. Um, you can spin any kind of yarn on there pretty much, from super fine to once you get into the other uh, flyer, you can get a little more bulky, but you're still limited to a 12 ounce bobbin on this. It is unfinished, so you may have to spend a little time with a sandpaper to get some rough edges out. Plan for that. It is not a finished wheel. Um, it's mostly smooth, but you may find yourself with some snag parts, spots because it hasn't been finished. It doesn't have the polyurethane finish on it that a typical Spinolution wheel would have, which gives you the option to paint it or stain it any way you want and customize it. But you may find there's some spots that you may want to just smooth out a little bit more, get yourself some good fine sandpaper for that. Um, <clears throat> this is really quite creative back here with the new fan tensioning device. So the idea is you have a different ratios, basically, which are different tensions on the wheel. So play around with that. You shouldn't even need to use the old-fashioned tensioning device. That is not even a requirement here. Uh, there may be some additional things that I will learn over time, and I guess I'll have, probably have to do an update video if there's things about the assembly I might have missed, or what the penny's for. I believe it has something to do with changing out a bearing if you ever need to do that. Hopefully you don't. If there's other maintenance on it and I find over time, I'll make a fresh video for that. But this is really kind of a clever new design back here and it'd be curious to see if this transitions on to the rest of the spin evolution line over time. Incorporating the um, accelerator right into the wheel so you have your choice of using it or not using it is kind of nice and just another little 3d printed part for them um, this is just a few more steps towards a 3d printed wheel but it's still partially a mix between the two right now uh, all of this kind of thing is being done in-house now uh, so there's no shipping delays or anything like that because of all of these rolls it's all printed in-house uh, don't forget, you've got your little holder for your Lazy Kate pegs, so you can have your bobbins over here. And if you have the 12-ounce on here, you can have up to three 
four ounce bobbins on the side that would then load that flyer. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you got something out of it and uh, got you through putting together your Abe wheel from Spin Perfect. Thanks for watching. Happy spinning.